Welcome to the installation video of the Surf 8, the upflow algae scrubber from Santa Monica Filtration, which currently is the largest algae scrubber uh, that we have as of December 2014. So it's in the box right there, the uh, brown box with the red sticker, and we're going to uh, open it up and drop it in the reef pond here and install it, and uh, plug in the air pump and the lights and just show you uh, what would be involved in installing it in your reef pond or uh, more probably your sump or your scrubber sump or your pond or maybe even floating on the top of your um, your display if you have enough room and uh, you're not going to block your lights alright so anyway um, let's go ahead and do this there we go so this is the uh, box that it's shipped in, and uh, if it's going to be kept in a store on a shelf, it would be kept in this box also, uh, because it's a much bigger scrubber than all the other ones. Here's your instructions and your air tubing and your optional air tubing caps if you want to only run half the scrubber, like on a new tank, and a syringe if you ever need to, say, six months or a year down the road, um, if you ever need to put some vinegar into the air tubings to clean out the lime buildup, if you have any lime buildup. Okay, so uh, right now we don't, uh, well, I'll tell you what, we'll go ahead and get out the air tubing because we'll certainly need that. And we'll come back to this in a second. But we'll go ahead and install it right away. This is one quarter inch inside diameter pure silicon tubing. Three eighths diameter external or outside diameter but uh, one quarter inch inside. Super flexible and 10 feet long, 3 meters, so you can put your air pump in another room or in a closet or someplace else if you want to because the Surf 8 does require a larger air pump. Get that in a second here. Alright, so we have this. We're going to put it right there. Alright, so inside very well packaged I mean it's enough that the surf scrubbers have foam all the way around them that helps a lot but this is really packaged uh, good because it's the first scrubber we've had to have the first upflow scrubber to have two lights and we want them to be uh, we want them to be very secure so we're gonna we're gonna pull it out this way the lights, the um, power cords are down there also, so they're going to come out from underneath it. And here's your power cords. Okay. So, I think that's all of it. Let's move this box. Okay, so it's very heavy for a, for a floating scrubber, it's very heavy. Just this part's 13 pounds, doesn't include the power supply cords of course. Got straps, packing straps here to hold the lights in place, so the lights are resting against the foam uh, when it's being shipped. And uh, you can keep these straps. You don't need to throw them away in case you need to move or, you know, do anything. It's always good to have your packing straps. So just save these things. Ok, 
Okay, there we go. There is your Surf 8, just like in the, this is the same one that was just like in the other video that showed the uh, different parts of it. Okay, so nothing's changed here. And it's ready to install. So let me just undo the bag on the power supplies here. Each light is the same exact light that you find on a Surf 4. So you can take this light off and put it on a Surf 4. It drops right in. Or put a Surf 4 light right on here. And uh, each one has two power supplies, low power and high power. So there's four connectors. You can plug these into your reef controller or a, a manual timer or whatever. So you have, you'll plug in one of these and one of these for low power. And after a week or two weeks, you plug in the other one and you're good to go for full power. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, drop it in. All you need to do is connect up your tubing. Here's the pump we're going to use, same pump as in the other videos. This is the Coralife SL38, and um, it's okay. It's not a lot of air for this. The SL65 would be better, but this is what I have, the SL38, so we're going to use this one right now. The SL65 would be, uh, would be better. It's the same size, just puts out more air. Um, there are many other pumps that are much quieter and probably run cooler than this. Uh, I haven't experimented with them at this time, so I'm just going to say that this one works great. It's just loud and gets warm, and um, that's the reason why we have all this tubing here. So you may want to put this in a different room. Some people don't care, though. They have a fish. Everything's in a fish room or whatever. So that's it. You just connect up the airline, and uh, you obviously put your power supply on, and you just... Uh, you're good to go. You drop it in. Okay, and uh, that's the installation. Not much to it. It's going to slowly settle in position as the inside uh, fills up with water. Um, but uh, if you were looking for a quick installation filter, this would be it. So let me just go ahead and plug in the uh, air pump. Get some bubbles going on there. Okay, so as you can tell, this thing here makes the majority of the sound. Once these things, especially once these things get growing, they become pretty much silent. When they're empty like this is when you can hear the most of any noise. All right, so I'll bring the camera around here in a second. Um, but that's a decent amount of water. It's not, I mean, a decent amount of air bubbles. It's not a lot because this is, like I said, this, can, this whole thing can handle 80 liters per minute. This is only 38. And it's an older pump too, it's like a year and a half old. So we have 38 liters per minute, this can handle 80 liters per minute. That's why a bigger pump like an SL65, which is 65 liters per minute, might be better. Alrighty, so uh, obviously you would plug in the uh, lights and you would probably uh, undo your, you know, you would undo this and make it look nice. But, just to show you, so this is one light. I have only one side plugged in. Let's see if it's this one. Yeah, there we go. So that's going to give you low power mode. That's the way you're going to run it for a week or two. Also notice that uh, when I lift up one, especially using only one hand, it's much more stable than a Surf 4. Surf 4, if you're only using one hand to lift up the light, uh, the whole unit is going to is going to move around a lot more like this. Okay, so that may play uh, into what you're looking to do if you have to do service on these things and you only have one hand or whatnot. So the uh, other one, the second light, these are for the other two lights. 
going to plug that in, just one of them for now, and that's going to give you low power on your second light. Okay, so you would let that run seven days or 14 days or 10 days, and uh, when it gets a brown coating on the inside, then you're going to plug in the other two of the lights. And from that point on, you'll always probably use both of the lights like this. All right. So um, the uh, operationally speaking here, it's just going to float around. It's going to have a slightly varying depth depending upon how much growth is in and how much air you're pumping and things like that. But you don't really have to play around with it until many months later, and maybe you want to try to fine tune it. Okay, so other than that, and uh, taking a look here, but a quick look at this. Let me just unplug this. Your instructions with the air tube caps, the little red caps, they are going to be if you want to only run one half of this, especially on a new tank that's clean, okay? Maybe you only want to run one of the compartments. Well, obviously, you just don't plug in the other light, but also you can shut off the tubing on one side of this underneath, and that's going to give you, once it drains out, that's going to give you air in only one compartment because that's all you really are looking for. Uh, it's really detailed in the other video, the overall, the overview video. But if you haven't seen the overview video yet, it's not going to be easy to do it now because it's wet with salt water. But you're going to be adjusting these tubes here. All right, so there. I don't want to drip them too much on power supplies. All right. Um, the instructions. that are now wet, uh, that's going to be the red tube caps. You may never need it, but uh, only if you're going to be running one of the compartments. The syringe, some people, they get a faster lime or carbonate buildup on the end of the tubings underneath. As long as you clean it with a uh, paper clip or something, whenever you're doing your regular service, it usually never builds up too much. But if you forget about it, or there's an event where it, it clogs up almost all that, then just lift it out of the water when you're doing a regular cleaning, Get your syringe, which is included here. It does not have a needle, so there's no, there's no needle on the syringe. And just use a little bit of vinegar and uh, undo one of the tubings and just push the vinegar into the tubing. Vinegar dissolves lime buildup. And so you can let this sit in your sink or whatever and let the vinegar soak in for maybe an hour or so, but after a while it'll be completely cleaned out. And then just don't let it build up again. But that's included if you need it. And in here, of course, these are the instructions for all the different SURFs, uh, including the SURF 2, 2X, and SURF 4. Also gives instructions on how to use it as a seaweed cultivator. So uh, a lot of people now are wanting to not filter their aquariums. Instead, they're wanting to grow seaweed for many different purposes. And so the first part of the instructions are about aquarium, but the last part of the instructions are for the seaweed cultivation somewhere in here. It is here. Okay, seaweed cultivation. It's also called sea vegetables. And um, it's a little more experimental because no one's really done this before. But there's the uh, there's the information for that. And then some miscellaneous items uh, here on the end. So you can plug it in and get it going in five minutes and then you want to take some time to read this. Probably most important, only start with one light after you get a brown growth, you need to take the whole thing to your sink or outside with a hose and spray off. And with a toothbrush, get the slime growth off the rocks. Some people, a lot of people, don't know to remove the slime growth and they let it stay on there. And then the green hair cannot attach. So you need to take it to your sink. It needs to fit into your sink. Take it outside with a hose and a toothbrush and get all the brown, slimy growth off of the textures, the rocks and the textures, because that's going to 
slow down green hair. Once you do that once, maybe twice, the green hair will start attaching. Once it starts attaching, it's not going to let go because after all, that is green grabber attachment surfaces and it grabs the green. And it's the same material you find on the beach where seaweed has learned to use its enzymes to soak in and dissolve the rock and attach to the rock. Same material here. And um, so other than that, like it says on the label here, run it every 7 to 14 days and do your cleaning. If it's really thick and packed inside, you're not going to need to uh, take it anywhere to the sink or outside or anything like that. You're just going to, and you can leave the lights running, and you can throw the lights in the water like this. It's fine. It's not going to hurt anything. You can use this light as a macro fuge light also, okay? But after a while, you'll just be able to reach in, like my other videos, and pull the growth out like that. Alrighty, so that is the unboxing and installation of the Santa Monica Filtration Surf 8. And uh, do post up your videos of any Santa Monica filtration or any other scrubber that you've made so that we can compare and get them growing and get your nutrients nice and low.